Oh, I swear last time I started this video, I almost broke something. <sighs> uh, fingerprints. Ooh. So, this time I'm going to do a quick fire review on the Oppo Find X2 Pro five months after release. I'm going to start off by saying I do really like this phone. There are going to be negatives in it, of course, but I do all in all like this phone, but there are some things that do really let it down. So let's get into them. Actually, I'm going to start off with a positive. I'm going to start off with the display. It's a 6.7 inch Quad HD Plus display that can go up to 100, that can go up to 120 hertz. The, the, the screen is, is brilliant and I really do love that fast refresh rate on it. I think this is the strongest part of the phone, if I'm totally honest. The, just, the build of the phone is really nice. The screen, as I say, is really good. The bit that lets it down for a bit for me is it is slightly curved. So when I'm holding it, it does kind of slip a little bit. And I do do some accidental touches on it as well. I'm not gonna lie. I do have fat hands, okay? Leave me alone. So next up is probably the weakest part for the phone, and that is the battery. So let me explain. The phone has a 4,260 milliamp hour battery, which might sound a lot, but when you compare that, when you combine that with a Quad HD Plus display with 120 hertz, that battery goes quick through the day. Now you can put it down to 60 hertz at full HD plus, which does save more of the battery. But when you have that 120 hertz option with Quad HD plus, you want to use those features, especially when this phone comes at a thousand pounds. You kind of think, you know, you're you're not getting as much value for the phone if you're not using those features. The part that kind of makes up for it is the 65 watt Super VOOC charging which goes from zero to 100% in around 38 minutes, which again is, is great, but I would much rather have a slightly larger battery with slightly slower charging. Like if that trades off for that, I wouldn't mind at all because I think that that would be a really good trade off for it to be a better, better lasting battery. Whereas this battery is just meh at best. Up next is the cameras on this phone. So this has a triple lens camera. It has a 48 megapixel main sensor, a 13 megapixel a 30 megapixel periscope telephoto lens and a 48 megapixel ultra wide lens now these sound crazy the, all the all these numbers sound mad especially like a couple of years ago we were having 12 megapixel cameras and we were like yeah that's amazing especially when the pixel the first pixel phone showed us how it was done and then from there they still use the same sort of formula i think my one downside for this is the 32 megapixel front facing camera it's a bit I'm just gonna, this is going to be the word of the, of the video, meh. Um, so taking photos of it on the back camera is really good because you've got versatile lenses, but on the front you've got that one camera lens and it's not that wide for one. And two, when you take the photos and you look back at them, they can be a bit grainy, even with good lighting, which is a bit strange in my opinion. And the other thing that lets it down is when you're using it for video. So the phone does support up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Again, that's great. But we're looking back on the videos, they can be grainy as well, which kind of sucks again, even in good lighting. Why does my hand keep clicking? So I tend to put it down to 1080p at 60 frames per second, just because the quality is a little bit better. Um, it supports better, it supports more lighting, and the video stabilization is a little bit better as well, because on 4K it can be a bit hit and miss. So up next is the speakers. And I'm not gonna lie, on this phone, they're pretty good. It supports for it supports Dolby Atmos, and these speakers get really loud, and they are and they are super clear. So the phone itself has a speaker at the top, and also a single fire speaker firing speaker at the bottom. And even when you cover that top that bottom speaker up, the top still sounds pretty good. I like that song. So yeah, when you're playing games or if you're watching Netflix or YouTube videos, the, the sound itself is, is, is great. That I think that's the strongest part of the phone is the speakers without a doubt and the screen, 100%. Now next up for me is something that's a little bit hit and miss and that is the performance of the phone. So this phone does use the Snapdragon 865 Plus. So this is the newest flagship that Snapdragon currently offers at this time. 
Um, it's been put into the newest um, Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra um, phones, and it works brilliantly on them. For some reason on this, I've been having hit or miss performance, so if I'm browsing the web, it hangs a lot for some reason, and I don't know why. The phone's had about four software updates since, so it's had its chances to kind of work out the little kinks on release. The Chrome app's also been updated, so has the Mozilla Firefox app, and so has the Opera Browser app, and these are the apps that I use to kind of see if it's just Chrome that's doing it, and it's not, it's all three that's doing it, and I it's really strange and it's not even certain websites if i go into like the carries pc world website if i'm just scrolling through it will hang if i'm looking at android authority for some reason it will just hang and i don't know if it's to do with the optimization from the developers of the website or if it is just to do with the phone i i, I honestly don't know and i can't figure it out it's really strange on the gaming side of this the phone does really well it can run most games at the highest resolution that it can offer on the phone as well as the frame rate as well at 60 frames per second fine no no troubles there at all which again is really strange that it just hangs on browsers but if you're playing intense game intense running games like PUBG mobile or COD mobile for some reason it doesn't stutter it just goes and also it does have a game mode on it so you can like stop notifications going on so you're just fully focused on the game and not on anything else which is quite nice it's it's good to keep like keep your mind off stuff that's happening in the real world right now 2020 so my overall thought for this phone is is it good value for money i don't want i don't want to say no because the phone is a very good phone as I say, it's well built. It's glass on the front and glass on the back. It has a triple camera lens set up, which are good. The front camera lens, meh. And it does have the super fast charging. My main letdown for this phone, it has a £1,000 price tag on it, but it does not support wireless charging. And the battery is meh at best. And that might seem like a very small complaint for a lot of people, because a lot of people probably don't need wireless charging. But... For me, I've got wireless charging on this desk. I've got one next to my bed. I've got one in about four other rooms in the house. So I'm set up for wireless charging. This phone, for some reason, doesn't support it. It's glass on the back. It looks like it's capable of doing it. And it's not. And I think it's because they think the 65 watt super food wire, uh, wired charging is good enough. And in my opinion, it's not. So that is kind of a letdown for me. When there are other phones out there, like the newly released iPhone 12 or the Google Pixel 5, that both support wireless charging and have really good battery life. The Pixel 5, I think, has astonished everyone with its battery life, considering the previous ones being a bit. But this year, Pixel really blew it out of the water of its battery life. It may not have got the best processor in the world on it, Admittedly, it doesn't. It has a 765 chip, so it's capable of running 5G. I don't know. I think Pixel have always been a really strange phone lineup. And obviously, the iPhone doesn't include the charger in the box. But if you're an iPhone user, you're going to have the iPhone chargers around. So my major part about this phone is, it, is it worth a £1,000? No. If you can get the phone for £700, then yes, I think the phone's 100% worth it. But if not, you've got the newly released iPhone 12 and the newly released Google Pixel 5 that offer near the same specs, but for less money. It just doesn't make sense to spend a thousand pounds on a phone that doesn't have everything, especially wireless charging. It doesn't make sense, it doesn't have it. Getting angry. <laughs> anyway, these are my opinions on the Oppo Find X2 Pro. If you disagree, then sound off in the comments below and we can argue it out, that's fine. And whilst you're down there, make sure you click that little red button to subscribe to the channel to see more of these videos and also click that little grey bell icon to know when I've uploaded and you'll be notified. And that's the end of today's video. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye all!